And now it's time for Silly Songs with Best Friends Forever. The part of the show where best friends forever come out and sing a silly song. You're my BF. You're my BFF. You're my BFNFL. My BFFLNMW. G, I think you're swell. T for B. One thing I know, I am H O G O I A N A L. So true. I'll always be your left sign three, cause G, I think, I think you're swell. swell. I think so too, you see, F U, you'll never be O T L. With you, I am N V G C, cause G, I think you're swell. There's no one like you. You're so easy to talk to, it's a green. All we need is concise communication with a lot of compensation. The part of the show where Laddie comes out and sings a silly song. Another lonely day in a crowded town, making our way the best we know how. Oh yeah, but we're moving up. Yo, up, up, up. We're moving. Got our dishes packed. Yeah, they are stacked. They've been wrapped to win. Oh, that's the porcelain. I ain't gonna break it. Yo, listen no up. No way. Even if I shake it. Oh, yeah, man. All day. Covered with love. Sealed against troubles. Sheltered in a glove. Now it's time for Silly Songs with Laddie, the part of the show where Laddie comes out and sings a silly song. One day, while talking with Dr. Archibald, Laddie confronts one of his deepest fears. 
If my lips ever left my mouth, packed a bag and headed south, that'd be too bad. I'd be so sad. I see, that'd be too bad. You'd be so sad. That'd be too bad. All righty. If my lips said adios, I don't like you, I think you're gross, that'd be too bad. I might get mad. Hmm, that'd be too bad. You might get mad. That'd be too bad. Fascinating. If my lips moved to the loose, left a mess and took my tooth, that'd be too bad. I'd call my dad. Oh dear, that'd be too bad. You'd call your dad. That'd be too bad. Hold it. Did you say your father? Fascinating! So what you're saying is, if your lips left you... That'd be too bad, I'd be so sad, I might get mad, I'd call my dad, that'd be too bad. That'd be too bad. That'd be too bad. Why? Cause I love my lips! Oh my, this is more serious than I thought. Larry, what do you see here? Um, that looks like a lip. What about this? It's a lip. And this? It's a lip, it's a lip, it's a lip, 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 it's a lip, it's a lip, it's a lip, 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 it's a lip, it's a lip, it's a lip, 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 lip. Larry, tell me about your childhood. When I was just two years old, I left my lips out in the cold and they turned blue. What could I do? Oh dear, they turned blue, what could you do? Oh, they turned blue. I see. On the day I got my tooth, I had to kiss my great aunt Ruth, she had a beard, and it felt weird. My, my, she had a beard and it felt weird? She had a beard. Oh! Ten days after I turned eight, got my lips stuck in a gate, my friends all laughed. And I just stood there until the fire department came and broke the lock with the crowbar and I had to spend the next six weeks in lip rehab with this kid named Oscar who got stung by a bee right on the lip and we couldn't even talk to each other until the fifth week because both of our lips were so swollen and when he did start speaking he just spoke Polish and I only knew like three words in Polish except now I know four because Oscar taught me the word for lip. Usta. Your friends all laughed. Usta. How do you spell that? I don't know. So what you're saying is that when you were young... They turned blue, what could I do? She had a beard and it felt weird, my friends all laughed. whoop -da. I'm confused. I love my lips. This has been Silly Songs with Laddie. Tune in next time to hear Laddie say... Have I ever told you how I feel about my nose? Look at the time! Bye, ba boo ba bili ba bidi bidi ba boo ba bili ba Hi kids, welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm late for my book club. Uh, book club? Hi everyone, sorry about that. It's okay, we started without you. Discussing the book? No, eating the snacks. And they were delicious. I would put them on par with the snacks from two months ago, but they paled in comparison to the snacks from last month. What are you guys reading? It's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Oh, that's a classic. Well, what did you think? Personally, I found the book riveting, full of Flawed characters and classic American humor. Well, what's this? Norm's notes? Condensed outlines of books for the vegetable on the go. You didn't read the book? You just read notes about the book? Do you guys allow this? It does make everything go a lot faster. Norm's got notes on every book you could ever want. War and Peace took me 15 minutes. I found it riveting, full of flawed characters and classic Russian pathos. <clears throat> I, I hate to interrupt, but Larry, we've got a letter to answer. Oh, right. Well, who's it from? This one comes to us from Zachary Alexander in Glen Allen, Virginia. How long is it? Uh, just one page. Oh, I'm sure I'll find it riveting. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, it says, Dear Bob and Larry, uh, there's a kid in my school named Joseph who gets made fun of a lot. I feel really bad for him, but I'm afraid if I help him out, I'll get made fun of too. I guess I'm just not sure if I should get involved. What do you think? I think that's enough reading for the day. Yes! Who brought dessert? Oh, it was my turn!
Well, Zachary, I think you've got a real problem. Sometimes the best thing to do is... Is to watch this story about Huckleberry Larry. Uh, Huckleberry Larry? We couldn't get the rights to Finn. Wait a minute. Are you saying we can watch the story from our book club? That's right. That's three minutes of my life I'll never get back. Oh, hello there. Glad you could stop by. I'm Clark Wayne, a storyteller. It's a perfect night for a story, don't you think? A story set on the big river? Yes, the Mississippi River, from the woods of northern Minnesota to New Orleans. They say a drop of water that falls into Lake Itasca way up here will be in the Gulf of Mexico 90 days later. Of course, most people like to get down the river a little quicker than that. This is a story about just such a fella, and to tell it, we're gonna have to take a little trip down the old river ourselves. Hello, Chato. Hello, Kimosavi. Not a soul out here at night. We should have the river all to ourselves. Oh, the mighty Mississippi, it's flowing strong and wide. Just me and you in an old canoe with a trusty Indian guide. Yeah, I'm a trusty Indian guide. I prefer the term Native American. Did you say something? Ready? Okay! Gotta take a trip on the mighty Mississippi. Gonna take a little trippy on the mighty Mississippi. <laughs> Must be a slumber party. Gonna take a trip on the Mississippi. Gonna take a little trippy on the mighty Mississippi. Gonna take a trip on the Mississippi. Gonna take a little trippy on the mighty Mississippi. The mighty Mississippi, it's flowing strong and wide. Just me and you in an old canoe with a trusty Indian. Oh, I'm sorry. With my trusty Native American guide. Gonna take a trip on the Mississippi. Gonna take a little trippy on the mighty Mississippi. Gonna take a trip. Not so loud, Chato. This is where our story starts. Timber! Dooley and Son's Lumber Camp. That's Mr. Dooley himself. He was in the tree removal business. In fact, Dooley had a way of removing anything or anyone who lumbered in his way. Get it? Lumber? Better! Harder! Faster! We're loggers! We're loggers! It's for Pete's sake, no singing! Hey, yeah. What seems to be the hold up, Otto? Oh, we're having a bit of trouble with this big one. Call Big Jim. Uh... Now, Otto. Big Jim, strong as an ox and twice as tall, struck fear into anyone that laid eyes on him. He was so tough, he could... Do I know you? Oh, don't mind me. I, I'm just the narrator. Okie dokie. Get a move on, Big Jim. I'm not paying you to stand around all day. Actually, you're not paying him at all. Oh, yeah. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> Unlike the other loggers, Big Jim was not an employee of Dooley and Sons, Inc. Five years ago, he was caught in Elk River, Minnesota with 1,100 pounds of stolen turkey jerky. As the sole witness, Mr. Dooley testified against Jim in court. Jim didn't go to prison. He was, however, sentenced to three years of community service at, of all places, a Dooley and Sons lumber camp. Good work, Big Jim. Here, have some jerky. No, oh, Mr. Dooley, there's been an accident. What happened? It's Silverstein. He got a splinter. A splinter? Hurry, there's not much time. Oh. Hey, you there, keep an eye on Big Jim. There are times when fate reaches down and grabs you by the lapels. This was one of those times. The logger in question, Steve, was not the sharpest blade in the sawmill. What Dooley said was, keep an eye on Big Jim. What Steve heard was, please run into town and get me a strawberry smoothie. Which is exactly what he did. 
For Big Jim, the cookie of opportunity was clearly on the table. He grabbed it. Oh, where's Big Jim? <laughs> hey, why didn't you stop him? Oh, I'm the narrator. I'm not supposed to get involved. Otto! You're gonna be in so Was that your dog barking? Uh, no, that was Steve. He likes to bark when we chase things. Well, that's just great. Is that a smoothie? on the Mississippi was quite so exciting, nor every situation so rife with turmoil. Take this scene, for example. That there green fella is Huckleberry Larry, though most folks just call him Huck. <laughs> and the red guy is Tomato Sawyer. Most folks just call him Tom, since, well, tomato seems a little obvious. These two happy bachelors are homesteading. What's homesteading? Well, when the U.S. government settled the West, they cut it into little pieces of land called homesteads. Now, if you could live on a piece of land for five years without starving or getting run off by bears, the government would give it to you. These fellas been living on their homesteads for four years, 362 days. Yep, come Friday, just three days away, this land will be theirs. Three more days, Huck, and this land will be ours. Our dreams are coming true. Can I borrow some more nails? Sure thing, they're in my tent, behind the record collection. Once I own this land and finish my theme park, I'll be selling tickets and turkey jerky to all the jerky-loving folks on the riverboats. I'm gonna call it Jerky Land. Mr. Jerky will be my mascot. Uh, yeah, I I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Uh, where'd you say the nails were? Behind all the records. Now, before MP3 players, there were circular vinyl discs uh, called... Uh, oh, forget it. You and your obscure music. Uh, Bobby Roberts and his happy monkey? Mama Bell and little Jimmy? Mama Bell and little Jimmy are not obscure. They sold over a million albums before little Jimmy disappeared five years ago. Huh. Uh, you know, Huck, uh, the theme park business is very capital intensive. It's hard to make any money in it. I'm not in it for the money, Tom. It's the action. Right. Uh, hey, have you thought any more about joining me in my new business? Uh, there's a lot of action in tax preparation. I still don't know what that is. Well, I'm gonna help people prepare their federal tax returns each year. It's very complicated, but I've got a good head for numbers. I'm sure you could pick it up, too. Uh, could you give me a hand? Sure. Always glad to help a friend. You know, there isn't a single tax preparer on the Mississippi anywhere between Minnesota and New Orleans. The market is wide open. What the tomato may have missed in his business plan is that this is 1904, and the federal income tax will not be established until 1913. For the next nine years, he will, in fact, have the market all to himself. What he will not have is customers. Or did you, still am I, am I to the, okay. I could tell him this, but as the narrator, technically speaking, I'm not supposed to get involved. Who's that guy? I think it was Colonel Sanders. Really? Where's your dog? What? Oh, that's Steve. He likes to bark. We're looking for a man, a dangerous man. Have you seen him? 
Wrong poster. No, I don't think so. Well, think harder. He tore up a factory with his bare hands, and he's headed your way. <laughs> This is a signal flare. If you see him, set this off and we'll come running. Why did he tear up the factory? He was looking for something. What? Turkey jerky. <laughs> what are we going to do now? We're going to Muscatine. But we've got to get back to camp. The boys won't know what to do without us. What are we supposed to do without them? We could say. <laughs> some in our vintage and some in our cups, while, while others run delis or bicycle shops. We fancy our flannel and extra long socks. We only be happy with this job because we're loggers, we're loggers. Logs! You got the flare? Yes, it's right here in my tent. You got the matches? Yes, I have the matches. But honestly, why would he come here? We don't have any turkey jerky. No, but we're gonna, as soon as I open jerky land. Well, sure, but nobody knows that now. Do they? Do they, Huck? I might have put up a sign or two. 29. 29 signs? Where? Along the river. It's advertising, Tom. My amusement park for dummies book says I have to do it. Well, it doesn't tell you what to do when your advertising attracts a homicidal turkey jerky loving maniac, does it? I don't know. I'm only on chapter three. <laughs> huh? What was that? Phew, uh, it's just birds. Okay, we need to come up with a plan. Uh, we need to take down all those signs. Tom? We need to build a fort with cannons. Tom? We need, say, 60 to 70 tall pine trees and iron ore for the cannons. Tom! What? <laughs> He's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> Do you know the way to St. Louis? I want to zing with my mama. Turkey jerky! I haven't bought my inventory yet! <laughs> I don't like turkey jerky. Well, of course you don't! <laughs> None of us like turkey jerky, do we, Huck? I love turkey jerky! I'm building the whole thing! <laughs> Signal flare. What? So, you aren't looking for turkey jerky. Mm. You just want to sing with your mama. In St. Louis. She said, meet me in St. Louis, Louis. But your name is Jim. My middle name is Louis. Right. Signal flare. So tell me, Jim Louis. Mama Bell called me Little Jimmy. Mama Bell and Little Jimmy? Well, sure. I could see why they'd call you Little Jimmy. Mama Bell and Little Yimmy. So, you were named after these guys? Mama! Uh, that's your mama? It's me, Little Yimmy! That's you. I grew. Oh, well, sure you did! At K, the airplay. K O A. A Ko A A. Okay. I'm just gonna go put the record away now. In the other tent. Why don't you take a nap on your boat? Or whatever. And we'll go call for help. <laughs> we have a, a signaling device. <laughs> How do I light it? With the matches, next to my books. <laughs> oh, here they are. So, rest well. Got it! Wait, not in a tent! Thank you for helping me. <laughs> it's the least we could do. You rest now. Help is on the way. What 
am I gonna do for a tent now? I didn't know it was gonna do that. Well, what did you think it was gonna do? The emotion of the moment was overwhelming. <gasps> Wait, the reward. What? Hundred dollar reward. That's right. You could buy a new tent. And you'll have enough money to finish Jerky Land. <laughs> this day has turned out all right after all. Yeah. As long as little Yimmy doesn't get hungry and eat us before that scary guy with the Steve dog gets here. Right. Happy river. Do, 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 do. do you hear something? Happy river. Sounds like do, do, singing. Do, do. River, a giggle with me. River, Yimmy and me. Wait a minute. Happy river. Do, do, do. Happy river, doot doot. Don't need to doubt as we battle about a happy river. Happy river, doot doot. Catfish of weather, I giggle with glee as we paddle down the river just by Yemi and me. Don't need complaining as the miles that are remaining. Happy river, happy river. Happy River, doot doot. He's telling the truth. What? He's little Yimmy. It's him. But he's huge. He grew. It's him, I tell you. No one else can sing with Mama Bell just like that. Wait, I... And we just called that scary guy and barking Steve to come take him back to whatever nasty place they came from. I don't know. I. We gotta help him get to St. Louis so he can sing with his mama. Wait a minute. He tore up a factory. He couldn't have. He's allergic to turkey jerky. See? Huh? Little Yimmy sings the I'm allergic to turkey jerky blues? <gasps> it's the scary guy in Barking Steve. Run, little Yimmy! <sighs> we gotta go wake him up. But the reward money. We gotta save little Yimmy! <laughs> Too late. They're here. All right, where is that big ox? I should have known little Yimmy would try to get back to his mama someday. See? It is a little Yimmy. Hey, boss, look at this. That's where they lit the signal flare. But where are they now? Uh, boss? Big Jim? Is that you? Stop! Get back Come here! Back here. Put down that tent! Jim! Go get him! I can't swim! He only doggy paddles! Ah, I'll track you down if it's the last thing I do! Mama? Uh, no, little Yimmy. That's not your mama. But we're gonna find her for you, aren't we, Tom? All Tom could think about was the hundred dollars he just lost, and the fact that if he wasn't back at that homestead by Friday when the man from the government showed up, he was gonna lose a whole lot more. You're on. What's my line? Just read the script. I don't have one. Larry, where's the script for the silly song? Oops, don't tell me you forgot. I've got a song. You're a lifesaver. The biscuit of Zazzle Miranda Bow, it lies atop a mound of snow. High in the hills where the cold winds blow, it's the biscuit of Zazzle Miranda Bow. Come on, <laughs> let's go! <laughs> the biscuit of Zazzle Miranda Bow. Our bags are packed and ready to go. Let's start the van and be gone. Start the van and be gone. Now our bags are all packed and we're ready to go. Let's start the van and be gone. Come on, oh, man. let's go. Oh, the biscuit of Sazza Miranda. Oh, what did you say? We can't leave here today. You've just got an errand to run. I just have to stop at the bank. You just have to stop at the bank? Well, if you insist, I suppose, we can deal with a minor delay. Deal with a minor delay. Say, Archibald, who made this biscuit anyway? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. So James McNabb of the Guild of Go, he made the biscuit so long ago, and the people they traveled to see it glow on the mountain of Zazzle Miranda Bow. Come on, let's go! The biscuit of Zazzle Miranda. Oh, what is it now? This isn't the way. I just need.
need to stop for some goldfish food. You don't even have a goldfish. No, but I was thinking of getting one, and I wouldn't want him to go hungry. Anybody need anything? Uh, maybe a venti half calf vanilla hazelnut latte? Hold the whipped cream. And maybe one of those little chocolate covered graham crackers? So, Archie, what's so great about this biscuit anyway? Well, if you really want to know, the biscuit of Zazamarat de Beau was lost in the world many years ago until my great uncle Archibald stubbed his toe on the frozen dough of the biscuit of Zazamarat de Beau. Come on! Please! No tears! No, not again! It's just not fair! You gotta have a map! A what? A map! A what? A map! Oh, a, a map! The biscuit of Zazamarandibo! The biscuit of Zazamarandibo! The joy! The thrill! I think I spilled the biscuit! The biscuit! The biscuit, the biscuit of Zazamarandibo! Uh-oh. Mmm, oh. sausage gravy. Huh. I might have made a wrong turn. The biscuit of Doug? <gasps> back to the van! Back to the van! It isn't too late! Let's go! So high in the hills where the cold would blow. The biscuit of Santa Miranda Bow. We're almost there! Oh, isn't this great? Who uh, needs to take a party break? Me! Me. <laughs> no! I suppose this has been Silly Songs with Archie. Tune in next time to hear Larry say... I always thought you were the announcer. So did I. Beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, how long was I sleeping? Where are we? I figure we're coming up on... Oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> coming up on Davenport. And we're making good time. Making good time? We're making terrible time because we're not supposed to be going anywhere. We got to get back. Wait, follow me. It's important to keep the raft balanced. <laughs> on account of little Yimmy being so big. <laughs> Oh, we've got to get off this raft and get back to our campsite before... <laughs> before the government man gets there and decides we starved or got run off by bears. Look, Tom, I have it all figured out. A couple hours ahead is a little town called Muscatine, so we can hop off there and put little Yimmy on the train to St. Louis. We can walk back home by Thursday plenty of time. <sighs> uh, fine. Uh, okay, Huck, Muscatine, uh, but no further. It is a lovely day on the river. Oh. Ah! Lovely. Hmm. Refreshing. <laughs> when you're slipping down the Mississippi, there ain't no need for getting lippy. Lays in the sun, but take a dippy. The fishing's always good. Just grab a pole and drag a liner. Lie on back, there's nothing finer. A big head cock or a red fin shiner abiding like they should. <laughs> well, well, the, the river, river is my neighbor. neighbor. Uh, excuse me, uh, this is the narrator's song. Oh, I thought you were the chicken guy. <laughs> Not a word, Chato. Well, the river is my neighbor, and the river is my friend. You'll find another story hiding round each river bend. That's right. So take me down the Mississippi. Your hair is long, it needs a clippy. Bring a coat, the night's getting nippy. On this, you can depend. Oh, the river. She's my friend. Must be 
a slumber party. Lovely. Mm. So the bad man in the mask dumped the jerky in your hands right when the police showed up? Yes. That's why I spent five years at the lumber camp. But you only had to serve three years. Mr. Dooley thought I couldn't count. That's nice. Hey, shouldn't we be coming up on m m m Muscatine. There it is. Muscatine. Okay, Jim. We're gonna... You're going to put me on a train to St. Louis, then you're walking home to meet the government man by Thursday. Right. Uh, that's right. Uh, Huck, run up ahead and look for the train station while I tie up the raft. Aye, aye, Captain Tom. Secure the area and pick up some donuts. Donuts? Everyone deserves donuts for a job well done. Excuse me, sir. Would you happen to know where I can find a train station conveniently located next to a bakery? Uh, you head down the street yonder, young fella. Thank you. Wow, what a great town. This place has got it all. Friendly town people, shopping, baby with a signal flare. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ah. Oh. Really sorry about that. Excuse me. Hey, is there something I can help you with, Sonny? So, uh, you play any football in high school? Y you got the size for it. No, I was in musicals. Really? Tom! 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 We gotta get out of here! <laughs> what are you doing? Huck, what's going on? Beware the babies! Maybe no one noticed. But they all know about Jim. The posters are everywhere. Even the babies have signal flares. The babies? Yeah, Tom. The babies! I... No! Huck, I said I'd go to Muscatine. That's it. I did my part. We gotta get back home or we'll lose everything. I know. Do you want to be bachelors living in tents for another five years? No, but I want to help little Yimmy find his mama. Let's just get back on the river and think this over. Come back with my donuts, you thieves! And my good baker, your own signs and free samples! It also said take one! Simply a rounding error on my part! Rock! You accept my apologies as graciously as I have accepted your free samples! Free! Back here! Back here! <laughs> Looks like these two rascals are in a heap of trouble. I wonder what Tom, Huck, and Jim are up to. Huh? <laughs> That was close. Yeah, real close. Oh, dear. Uh, uh, good day, gentlemen. Our vessel is proving herself less than seaworthy. Uh, might we come aboard? Absolutely not. Uh, no more helping. Uh, there could be a donut in it for you. You're really a king and a duke? Indeed. Of what? Well, my good tomato, you are looking at the king of Memphis, and my good friend here, the Duke of New Orleans. Pleased to meet you. But we don't have royalty in America. Obviously, you've never been to the South. And who might your prodigious compatriot be? I'm sorry? Who's the big guy? Oh, uh, that's Jim. As in Big Jim? Do you know the way to St. Louis? I want to sing with my mama. 
St. Louis. Uh, that's the site of the World's Fair. Is that where your mama is? Meet me in St. Louis, Louis. Meet me at the fair. I love that song. Meet me in St. Louis, Louis. I thought his Meet name was Jim. His middle name I is Louis. I will be your uh, Susan Lucci. What town are we coming up on next, Duke? Uh, I don't know. Uh-huh. I'll tell you what, friends. Since you were so kind as to snatch us from the river's icy jaws, the Duke and I will escort your large compatriot down to St. Louis. And as a token of gratitude, we will give each of you $10 for train fare back north to wherever you came from. Did you hear that, Huck? A train fare back up north. They'll take little Yimmy to St. Louis, and we can get back to our homesteads on time. Um. Put us ashore at whatever town we come to next, and we'll telegraph ahead and let your mama know that we're on our way to the fair. Do, do, ooh, ooh. Do, do, ooh, well, where are they? Ooh. They've been gone almost an hour. If we leave right now, we still might be able to make it back before the government man shows up. Uh, yeah. Look, Tom, I've been thinking. Maybe we should ride along, just to be safe. Have you forgotten about my tax office? And jerky land? Isn't that what you've always wanted? Yes. But I want to help little Yimmy, too. I've got news for you. I didn't hurt little Yimmy. I'm not the one who sent him up the river away from his mama. I didn't hurt him, so I shouldn't have to help him. Sometimes, not helping is the same as hurting. What? That makes no sense. If we see someone who needs help, and we can help them, I think that's what God wants us to do. Well, you... I'm gonna make sure little Yimmy finds his mama. I... Oh! I say, good news, friends! Everything is arranged. The telegram is on its way, and here is your $10 for train fare. I... I'm gonna make sure little Yimmy finds his mama. Is that more important than the last five years of hard work? The situation is under control. Uh, the Duke and I are skilled uh, raft drivers. I'm gonna make sure little Yimmy finds his mama. Then you'll be by yourself. Goodbye, Huckleberry Larry. Goodbye, Tomato Sawyer. I'm sorry, Huck. Let's go find your mama. No point both of us losing our land. Besides, I I'm sure little Jimmy will be fine. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> May I help you? Oh, uh, yes. I need a ticket. North to Dubuque or south to St. Louis? <sighs> North. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Uh -huh. Could you hand me my fishing pole? I didn't knock it down. And besides, I'm not supposed to get involved. <laughs> well, of all the... <laughs> My lucky fishing pole! That guy could have helped me. Listen, buddy, I hope you learn someday that that not helping someone can be the same thing as hurting them! <sighs> not helping. <gasps> Little Yimmy. That'll be five dollars and seven cents. Here's ten bucks. I'm going south to St. Louis. Hang on, little Yimmy. Help is on the way! <laughs> Yes, it looked like everyone was headed for the St. Louis World's Fair. What? Where do you want the story to end? The parking lot of a Kentucky Fried Chicken? Trust me, uh, this will be fun. Oh, here comes little Yimmy hucking those two rascals now. Wow. Most of this was built in my honor, you know. What, me being the king and all? Yeah, me too. It's time to find your mama, little Yimmy. But first, we need to lose the pickle. I thought he was a cucumber. Oh, look at the log ride! Mm. Ah, yeah. 
why, Huck, if you look closely, you'll see my name engraved in that log. I don't see anything. Uh, lean a little further. You'll see it. No, I still don't see it. Ah! Oh, there's so much to see here. Please remain seated while the van is oh. in motion. Uh, are you okay? I'm fine, little Yimmy. We'll find your mama in a minute. Oh, look, little Yimmy! Here comes your mama now! There he is! It's Big Jim, the turkey jerky bandit! Hook! You're coming back with me, Big Jim, for a long, long time! Leave him alone! Hook! Um, before we turn him over, there is the issue of reward. <laughs> He's all yours. Bye. Get back here! Where do you think you're going? We're gonna get him! Oh, Louisa! Little Yimmy, where you going? I'm coming to help you. Oh, that's okay. I'm doing fine. I'll help you, Hug! I'm good. Thanks, little Yimmy. That's my meal ticket. Otto, get me a flare. Oh dear. Fire in the hole! Goodbye, mother! Goodbye, father! Goodbye, turkey turkey! Oh, mama! You forgot about your good friend, Tomato. And your lucky fishing pole. I'm sorry, Huck. You were right all along. We do need to help others, even when it's not easy. I forgive you, Tom. <gasps> Little Yimmy! Know the way to Saint Louis. Right now. He's on the Ferris wheel. He's on the Ferris wheel. Follow me. He's headed for the amphitheater. Little Yimmy. Hi, Mama. Little Yimmy? Mama? Little Yimmy? Mama! Little Yimmy! <laughs> Mama. Little Yimmy. Not so fast! That guard is a wanted criminal! My Yimmy? Oh. That fella belongs to me! Someone run off with all my turkey jerky. Oh, oh uh, I, I was going to come back and pay you for every last stick. <laughs> Officers, I suggest you re-examine the Elk River turkey jerky case. We have a new suspect. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> May I? Oh, be my guest. <laughs> I thought you couldn't get involved. Well, that's just it. When you see that someone needs help and you know you can help them, you just have to get involved. Sing me a song as we paddle along the healthy river. Happy river. So things ended up pretty well. Mama Bell and little Yimmy were making music again. Why, they even released a new album. <laughs> You know, I'm so hungry, I could eat a whole donut. donut. Huh? You guys! Ah, get get back me. here with those donuts! Don't even know what they are! Yep, ever 
have been worked out pretty well. Wait a minute. What about me and Huck? We've got nothing left except one tent and a broken fishing pole. It's a lucky fishing pole. He's got a point. I guess. Come to think of it, I got a nice piece of land down by the river. I hardly use it except strumming my banjo on the dock. You want to set up your businesses there? Isn't that where you raise your chickens? <clears throat> Not a word, Chato. It's chicken free. Are you interested? Well, sure we are. I'll have a tax preparation office up in no time. Oh, yeah. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. No need complaining. I got miles that are remaining. Happy River. Personally, I found this story riveting, full of flawed characters and classic American humor. I enjoyed how the author intertwined complicated moral dilemmas with light-hearted vegetable frivolity. It's time to talk about what we learned today. And so what we What happened to the song? Norm's Notes version. For the vegetable on the go! <sighs> Now, let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us today. Very funny, QWERTY. Ah, uh, James 4.17. If you know what is right to do, but you do not do it, you sin. So, the Bible tells us that not doing the right thing is the same thing as doing the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, Larry, I think that's right. Uh, when you know what you should do and don't do it, you're actually doing something wrong. That's what I said. I, I know that's what you said. Because that's what the Bible says. Yes. Anyway, uh, Zachary, it's wrong for the kids at school to make fun of Joseph, but it's also wrong to see it happening and not do anything about it. The right thing to do is to get involved. Uh, let the other kids know that it's not nice to make fun of other people because it hurts their feelings. Tell your parents or a teacher what's going on, and, and they can help too. And even though it'll be hard, you can feel good knowing that you're doing the right thing by helping Joseph. Just like Huck knew, the right thing to do was to help little Yimmy. If he wouldn't have helped him, he would have been doing the wrong thing. That's right, Larry. Nice story. Thanks, Bob. I say next month, we skip the book and go straight for dessert. I second the motion. All those in favor, say mm. Mm -hmm. Opposed? Uh... The oomphs have it. Uh, remember, kids, God made you special. And he loves you very much. You shouldn't talk with your mouth full. Goodbye! Bye. And now it's time for Helpful Humanitarian Songs with Mr. Lunt. The part of the show where Mr. Lunt comes out and sings a Helpful Humanitarian Song. Well, he's a mangy old pet. If you saw him, I bet, you'd walk the other way. So sad and alone, with his hair overgrown, like a stinky old toupee. But doggies have feelings, and doggies need love, and doggies like those deep fried treats that come from up above. Oh, donuts for Penny, please give a glaze to make him smile. Thank you, ma'am, for troubled beast. Won't you at least comfort him a while? Sir, can you spare a donut for Benny? Please help my doggy friend. Thank you, kind sir. A honey dip would really help his broken heart to mend. His broken heart to mend. Well, just look at this pup. <laughs> he's brightening up. Oh, he's looking not so weak. Oh, Benny, <laughs> his outlook was grim till you gave pastries to him. Oh, look, he wants to speak. Oh, doggies have feelings. <laughs> Around, around, around. Hey, what's going These on? These donuts are dreamy, they're filled.
Someone help me. I need to sneeze. Wait for the sneeze, doctor. Just take a seat. He'll be right with you. Sneeze if you have to. Sneeze if you need to. Don't hold it in. Just be sure that you cover your mouth with a tissue. I will assist you. Sneeze all your troubles away. Add up to 150 miles an hour. Interesting fact. The average sneeze travels at a rate of 100 miles an hour. In 2003, Dirk Evert of Grunholz, Germany, clocked in at 150. Way to go, Dirk. Danke. I think I have a remedy. Perhaps in my potpourri. I bought it from a merchant in Spain. For ultimate sneeze satisfaction, try allergic reaction. Take a deep breath. If it helps, you can squint at the sun. Oh, here's some pepper. Let's see. I know. I can try this feather. Don't be afraid. Set it free! <laughs> Let it go! 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 Go, 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 go! Interesting fact. The photic sneeze reflex, or sneezing when exposed to bright light, is a genetic trait found in 25% of the population, including Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> Gesundheit, which interestingly means good health in German. Yeah. Sneeze if you have to. Sneeze if you need to. Sneeze if you apologize. Accidentally sneeze on your neighbor. Oh, hey, it hurt. This has been Silly Songs with Betty. Tune in next time to hear Dirk say, Ich bin ein Schneezer. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Letty Boy, the part of the show where Letty Boy comes out and sings a silly song. We join the league at supper time as they sit down for a meal prepared by Alfred. I don't want to eat my Brussels sprouts. He doesn't want to eat his Brussels sprouts. And I really, really don't like sauerkraut. Icky, slimy, stinky sauerkraut. My appetite is zero. No need to shed a tear -o. You need a supper hero. What's a supper hero? Got diddles you don't want to chew. Yeah, not too appetizing. Don't want to eat what's cooked for you. No, not really. Then, citizen, don't fear, oh, I am the supper hero. He is the supper hero. Yummy, 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 Thanks. I like this supper hero. This pasta dish has gotten cold. I beg your pardon? This 
pessimistic looks a little old. It's not that old. You can't go on, I must insist. It's my duty to assist. Well, I'm kind of hungry. Good citizen, don't fear, oh. I am the supper hero. He is the supper hero. Yum, 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 I was gonna eat that. Don't worry, folks, for me it's fun. A supper hero's job's not done. Yummy, 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 yum, yum, yum. Till every supper plate is clean, no matter what type of cuisine. Yummy, 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 yum, yum, yum. Who let him in? Hey, is that chocolate? I love chocolate. Oh, wait! Yummy, 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 yum. Yummy, 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 yum, yum. Ah, good citizens, don't fear, oh, and be of good cheer, oh. I love my new career, oh. I am the supper hero. Dude, he ate our cake. So, what do you say, guys? Can I join the league? This has been Silly Songs with Letty Boy. Tune in next time to hear the league say... No. Yummy, 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 yum. Hi, kids. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Junior Asparagus. Larry's on assignment. Well, thanks for joining me today, Junior. Uh, we're uh, here... We're over here by Cordy to talk about what we've learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. Uh, and God Junior, has a lot to say. What are you doing? We haven't learned anything yet. Are you sure? Because I feel smarter already. Uh, this is of real. course I'm God's sure, but we haven't even everyone. started the show. Well, if we're all done here, may I go? Junior, what's going on? What's your hurry? Hurry? Uh, yes, hurry. Well, you see, my mom said she was going to make me cookies. Oh, well, that's kind of her. And she said it would be done after the show today. So I want to hurry up and be done. Well, Junior, just because we finish the show sooner won't make cookies bake any quicker. No? Uh, no, you'll just have to be patient. Patient? Yeah, uh, sometimes we just have to wait, even if the waiting isn't easy. I don't get ya. It's just like this letter we got from Samuel Nofziger from Cairo, Illinois. Hi, Sammy. Samuel writes, Dear Bob and Larry, my dad promised to get me a bicycle when I turn five. I'm only four and a half, but I can't wait. I want the bike now. What should I do? P.S. Please hurry with your answer. Oh, I know just how you feel, Sammy. It's just like me and the cookies. I can practically taste those chocolate chips now. Oh, boy. Junior, you're not helping. Sorry. Sammy, your question reminds me of a man in the Bible named Abraham to whom God promised something. And Abraham had to wait, just like you. And I bet you have a story already, don't you? Actually, uh, not yet. Not yet? But the kids, Bob... They're waiting. Patience, Junior. It'll be done just in time. You'll see. Here, hold this. What are we doing, Bob? Oh, this is exciting, Junior. We're going to make a film ourselves. About what? We're going to interview Abraham and make a show. Abraham? How are you going to do that? Close your eyes and use your imagination. Out of everything. Yep, we have a catering tent and a nurse's station and a film crew. Ah! Wow, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Okay, we're burning daylight here, people. Chop, chop. The daylight is not all that is burning. It's too hot. I am uh, Junior, I'm the director. Uh, no complaining, guys! Ah! Uh, trust me, when we're done with this, we'll have the best show ever. I cannot wait. Uh, just have some patience. Patience? <laughs> He's fine! Not really. Not that kind of patience. <laughs> Bob the Tomato here, and right now I'm in the middle of the desert. Well, it is so hot, and there is so much sand. Where I'm about to get to the bottom of the amazing story of one of my personal heroes, 
Abraham, a man of incredible patience. Where's the patience? No, not that kind Maybe of... Maybe we should skip this part and hurry up and find this Abraham guy. I have cookies waiting, remember? Whoa! You look kind of rad. Hey, you have a I'm, I'm not the Come patient. Here, I'm, I'm the director. I can't hear you. Dig, do! Jean-Claude, move that light over. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Abraham's nose is shiny. Uh, could I get some makeup here? Makeup! <laughs> God bless you! And that background, it, it looks a little bit too deserty. Uh, Philippe? Oh, beautiful. Okay, let's do this. <clears throat> Mr. Abraham, you are the father of a great nation. What is the secret to your leadership? Well, frankly, I'm as... Bob! What happened? Um, we ran out of tape. Well, get another. I brought plenty. Actually, you're down to one, Bob. One? Uno. Just have to get through this kind of quickly then, huh? Hurry, hurry, hurry. All right, everyone. Take three. Take three! I said... Frankly, I'm as surprised as you. Cut! Dang four! Uh, as I said, uh, frankly, I'm as surprised. So, these are spitting camels. Cut, cut, cut. Uh, very sorry, Mr. Abraham. I'm so embarrassed. You all blushing. But I I'm red. That's what I said. <laughs> you are definitely a man of great patience. Patience! No, no, no! Patience! Not patience! Oh, that makes perfect sense. Cookies waiting. Abraham interview. Take five. Ow. Sorry, moving right along. Uh, all right, then. Uh, back to your... <laughs> story, Abe. Well, to tell you the truth, Bob, it's all about hope and trusting that God is gonna do what he says he's gonna do. <laughs> Even if it takes some time. Well, hey! Waiting is really hard. Sure it is. But sometimes you gotta wait. Even when the waiting ain't easy. You know, my name wasn't always Abraham. It used to be Abram. That was back when I was living the high life with my wife, Sarah, in the town of Ur. Ur? Ur. You are Ur. We are Ur, not Ur. Ur. Plenty of refreshments and loads of family. But when I say family, well, I mean my brothers and sisters. You see, Sarah and I had not been able to have any children of our own. And that's what we wanted, a child. Here's your ball. That's Harold! Aunt Sarah! I think I'd make a good mommy. Uh, this is Lot, Abraham's favorite nephew. Oh, yeah. Hey, you kids! <laughs> oh, sure, I think maybe Abe and Sarah wanted kids, uh, but sheeper like kids. Uh, plus, you can set pizzas on their backs like a little table. So, you know, extra awesome! We love it in her, we love it in her! Hey! It's really, really nice in her! And then one day, God spoke to me. He told me to leave my country, my father's home, for a land that he would show me. It was very surprising. This is very surprising. God said one day my children and my children's children would become a great nation, and he was going to bless me. God bless you! Finally, a child of our own! <laughs> I can't wait! Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, sit down, turn around, sit down, whoa! I, I sat on something sharp. That's fantastic. Uh, moving right along here. Yes, uh, let's talk about... Patience. 
I was still young, 75, practically a seedling. But, but I was at peace and ready for the adventure ahead. Peace? It was a mess. Packing, change of address forms. Plus, I have to plan for a baby. He knew I preferred to live near my mother. So, Sarah. Are you sunburned? I'm red. That's what I said. You know, I've got an ointment for that. So, anyway, God said to go, but where? Abe says he didn't say. He didn't say? It's like making my insides all crazy, like, like a smoothie. You know what I could go for right now? A smoothie. I love those. Bob, we're running low on tape. Sir, could you make your answers a little more short and peppy? But uh, it, it didn't happen, short and peppy. Then just skip to the part where we learn about patience. Patience! <laughs> uh, as you were saying, so we obeyed God, leaving our homeland of Ur immediately. Lot tagged along, too. We took a lot of sheep. Lot took a lot of pizza. A lot. We finally arrived in Canaan. Well, life was good. But still no children. Then, famine hit. Lot ate all the pizza. What? It was cheese in the crust. <laughs> hey, you kids! So we decided to move again, this time to Egypt, to weather it out. And though we didn't have our own home... And still did not have a child... We were patient! It wasn't easy, but we waited for God's promise. I spent time thinking about all the things I would do with my baby. And I started thinking up names for him. <laughs> Larry, Mo, Shemp. God had made us a promise, and we had hope. When waiting got hard, it helped me to think about how wonderful it would be when we got our promise. So that's how patience paid off. The end! Okay, let's go home, Bob. Cookies away! Uh, Junior, what about the child they were waiting for? The child? We wanted a child? Haven't you been listening? Mm, sorry. Cookies on the brain. Anyway. We were at the part when Abe Shepherds and Lot Shepherds started fighting. Fighting? Yeah, you do not want to wear wool in the desert. It makes you grumpy. You're telling me! <laughs> Lot and I love each other like brothers, but our shepherds... <laughs> well, that's another story. <laughs> So, I allowed Lot to choose which direction he would go, and that land would belong to him, east or west. I think I'm gonna go east. And my dear nephew went his own way. My last bit of family left. <sighs> That was a sad day. But that's the time when God spoke to him again and reminded him of his promise. God told me to look around, all around, east and west. He promised me that all the land would be mine and that my descendants would outnumber the sand. But I can't count the sand. I think that's the idea, honey. It was a wonderful promise. And then, right when we thought our answer was about to arrive, war broke out! You've got to be kidding me! This is never gonna end! You can't rush God's promises! Would you please hurry up and get to the lesson in patience? Patience? That's what I'm talking about! I can't do this anymore, Bob! Yeah! What he said! I'm burning hot out here! <laughs> That helped a little. Bob, I'm tired of waiting. I want to go home. I want my cookies. Now! Junior, come on. This is why we're here. For what, Bob? So I can miss the cookies my mom promised me? No, Junior. You're eventually going to get the cookies your mom promised you. Well, but what 
can I do in the meantime? Well, do you trust that your mom's gonna do what she said she's gonna do? Yeah. You're right, Bob. I'll get my cookies eventually. I shouldn't have gotten so upset. But we're still out of tape! Oh, no. I got an extra if you want it. You mean it? Sure. It's the second season of Dancing with the Stars. And you can tape over it. Ready to roll. So, Abe, I too know how hard it is to wait calmly for something you really, really want. Tell us what happened next. Then I got a new name, Abraham, which means father of many nations. Has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Then God made good on his promise. And sure enough, Sarah gave birth to a baby boy. The baby God promised 15 years earlier. Isaac. The boy that would become the father of Israel. The nation that would bless the whole world. All the way through King David to Jesus. Wait, that's the end? You're done with the story? Well, there's a lot more, actually. But as far as patience goes, it's a good place to stop. Dad, 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 can we shoot a few holes? <laughs> you got it, son. Come on. <sighs> what a nice story. Aren't you glad you waited? So there you have it. Patience. It's not always easy to wait, but God always comes through with his promises. Are you ready for your cookies now, Junior? What? Already? Oh boy! Cookies, here I come! Do you suppose there might be some cookies for us? Oui, oui, mon ami! <laughs> and now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. Bob the Tomato, unable to sneeze, visits the sneeze doctor. Please, can someone help me? I need to sneeze. Wait for the sneeze, doctor. Just take a seat. He'll be right with you. Sneeze if you have to. Sneeze if you need to. Don't hold it in. Just be sure that you cover your mouth. With a tissue, I shall assist you. Sneeze all your troubles away. Add up to 150 miles an hour. Interesting fact the average sneeze travels at a rate of 100 miles an hour. In 2003, Dirk Evert of Grunholz, Germany, clocked in at 150. Way to go, Dirk! Danke! I think I have a remedy. Perhaps in my pulmonary, I bought it from a merchant in Spain. For ultimate sneeze satisfaction, we try allergic reaction. Take a deep breath, if it helps, you can squint at the sun. Oh, here's some pepper. Let's see. I know. I can try this pepper. Don't be afraid. Interesting fact, the photic sneeze reflex, or sneezing when exposed to bright light, is a genetic trait found in 25% of the population, including Dirk. Gesundheit, which interestingly means good health in German. Yeah. Sneeze if you have to. Sneeze if you need to. Oh, 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 oh,
has been Silly Songs with Peggy. Tune in next time to hear Dirk say, Ich bin ein Schneezer. Plywood, Jacques? Let's see. Put on goggles. Turn on saw. Wear safety mask. Ear protection. Cut carefully. Turn off the saw. <laughs> nope. Way too much work. Cardboard it is. But Jacques... No buts, Maurice. I'm following in the footsteps uh, of the, the great, great Leon, Leon Morang, the, the most, most beloved inventor in the world. world. He was born right here in Boo Booville, you know. My hero. Uh, yes, I know. But... Where's the glue, Maurice? <laughs> Your glue, Jacques. What took you? <gasps> Maurice, this stuff needs hours to dry. I don't want to wait. There, that'll do. Look at these split. Ah, uh, spit. Gum instead of glue? This'll be my greatest invention ever. The one that would make Mama proud. <sighs> Pretty. No time for pretty. This is the one, Marie. The invention that'll set the world on its ear. Think of all the people I'll help. I can't wait to show it to the guys at Pi today. Pi? Today? The Philanthropic Invention Enthusiast Club. Inventions for the good of all. That's Pi. I love Pi. Jacques, did you forget about our practice today? Practice? Uh, yes, practice. We need to get ready for the town's annual Boo Boo Bird Festival. We signed up as partners in the Baguette Relay Race. Remember? Oh, don't worry. We're best buddies. I didn't forget. We're practicing during lunch, right? Right. Did you make the sandwiches? They're over on the workbench. Uh, there's only one. Did you forget mine? I ate mine last night to save time. And there's no peanut butter. Just bread. Yeah. I was in a rush, so I skipped that part. Skip the... Shock, really? You need to try a little patience, or, or everything just leads to disaster. Disaster? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about taking the time to do things right, Jacques. Like your brilliant idea for a steam-powered washing machine. You were so impatient to show your friends that you didn't fix the leak. I changed it to a steam-powered lawn sprinkler. It'll help everybody in town during the next drought. And your automatic knitting machine? Yeah, I got tired of waiting for the parts to be delivered. Besides, it makes fine waffles by poking dents in the pancakes. If you don't mind the diesel flavor. Shock, you know, you don't even take time to be friends anymore. Maurice, you gotta understand. From Paris to Toledo, inventions that are neato become ideas in which the world believes. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm impeded from success that would be sweetened if my genius wasn't faster than my means. My keys, please. Oh, brother. <laughs> gotta hurry, gotta worry, gotta step on it and scurry. You just skipped a step and short a cut. I get that town by noon. Gotta make it fast and cheap. Gotta take a turn and shoot. Gotta venture in a mouth least till my pal is turning. My brain is so full, it's overflowing. But I'm sweating when I should be making. Wow! Ow! Before my memory, ah. I just get past all the details. I don't need to get it right unless it's right right now. He won't ever get it right unless it's right right now. Do you think maybe we could slow down? Of course! Is that underwear? We're here! Attention fellow pie lovers! Please recite the motto stated clearly at the bottom of the pie chart. We find how to mentor and inventor every women and fancy true. So now, oh, now allow me to introduce to you my latest patent. Thingy. You first, Alphonse. I thank 
My finance don't factor for this robot arm exactor. You can't stack it. I can. You can. I can because that's where. Well, get ready to scream hard out at my fancy telephone. Oh, you're calling. Well, I built just one, so no one else is there. I pride myself on the only wall of cube shaped breakfast in the town. You ain't down. At least it doesn't smell bad. It's a better plan than you had. We don't need to get it right because it's right right now. They don't need to get it right unless it's right right now. Hey, what do these pinwheels do? They don't do anything, but they look awesome. Uh, not ready. We're still working out the kinks in this one. Man, I took a whole 20 minutes to build that thing. Oh, my precious telephono! Chuck! What are we going to do now? Oh, Greg, he's daydreaming again. Years ago, I dreamed of old inventions built inside my head. But time goes slow, impatience grows. It takes less time and turns out fine to chuck the plan and get it done. What's patent pending to you? Before our memory fills, I just skip past all the details. I don't need to get it right, unless it's right. Right, 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 left, on, right, now. But where will you find a volunteer foolish enough to try it? Understand, and until you do, you can find a new assistant. Wait! Well? You still have my book? I dropped it. <gasps> Where? In there. <laughs> hmm, sounds like something important is about to happen. Our lunch is about to be served. Blue. My good citizens of Booboville, as 
you know, we are approaching the annual Boo Boo Bird Festival. But as you also know, there has been no Boo Boo seen in this area for years and years. And because the Boo Boos stay away, the peoples no longer come to see the Boo Boos. Nobody comes anymore. It is an empty festival. So it is with a heavy heart that I must announce that we must cancel the Boo Boo Bird Festival. So the festival? In a baguette relay with Maurice? Unless, unless someone, an inventor perhaps, can find a way to make the Boo Boo reappear. An inventor? That's me. If an inventor can invent such a device, I will appoint him the Minister of Inventions. And he will get to wear this fabulous hat. Oh, I look stunning wearing that, baby. The Minister of Inventions? Mama would be so proud. Think of all the things I could do. Maurice, Maurice, let's get started. Oh, yeah. I need my book. <laughs> Here, bookie, 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 bookie. Oh. Oh. Could it be? Oh, why my little bookie? Why are you? No. Going so soon. <gasps> you, you, you're the mad scientist. I get a little grumpy, but I'm generally amiable. <laughs> Scientist, eh? I thought you were a myth. I'm a mister, actually. So, are you an inventor? I used to be. Back when I lived in Boo Booville. What beverage? Sure. Nifty. We all have the capacity for great inventions. Oh, yeah. I'm an inventor, too. Really? What have you invented? Tons of stuff. And really fast, too. Except that, well, they sometimes don't end up working the way I plan. Really? Yeah. My flying machine crashed with my best friend in it. He didn't like that so much. And you came up here looking for answers. Yeah, my book. So, why to leave Booboville anyway? One word. Leon Morang. Leon Morang? Wait, that's two words. Leon became rich and famous when he invented that flying machine. Oh, yeah. He was the best. Oh, he wasn't so great. Not an ounce of patience in that man. He nearly ruined me. I vowed to make the discovery that had always eluded Leon Moran. So I set up shop here. And after all these years, I finally made that discovery. What is it? That's it. What, the sunflower seed? Yes. That's not a discovery. It's a snack. <laughs> Take this home. Plant it. You'll see. See what? What does this have to do with anything? I thought we were talking about inventing. A lot of people put great stock in Leon Lorraine's book. But the Bible, a much greater book if you ask me, holds the answer you seek. Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. Haste makes mistakes? Impatience can lead to disaster. That sounds familiar. 
It takes time to get it right. So be patient day and night. And eventually you'll see. No, 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 something, something, something. I'll make you a deal. If you plant that seed, care for it, and bring it back to me when it's full grown. You'll get what you desire most. Becoming the Minister of Inventions? It's a fabulous hat. Deal. Let's shake on it. This is the best shortcut in the whole world. <laughs> if that's the way you want to look at it. See you later. Minister of Inventions, here I come. Don't forget your book. And a work, clickety clack, hum ding per week. Gizmos and gadgets are music to me. When my ratchets are spinning, I can't help but grinning. My tchotchkes and flotchkes and blue doohickeys. My funnels and droppers and small rubber stoppers are closer than brothers can be. See? My gizmo devices are pleasant surprises when they I doing? I don't have time for this. I've got a seed to grow. Clunk and a work, move it along, a ping for woe. Ping on the bob, get on the job, on with the show. I'll ramp up the speed now, I'm watering the seed now. A liter, a gallon, it's ready to go. Hey, enough fertilizing, I'll try magnetizing. This plant's got no get up and grow. Huh? I can't help but see now. Much for the humding purr. No, oh, this is taking forever. Hello and bonjour, Frere Zach. Look what we're working on. Really, guys, not now. You see, I was thinking all we need to get a boo boo bird is a giant trap. Yeah, you know, a cage or something. How are you gonna get him in there? Oh, this is where Alphonse comes in by building a giant girl boo boo. It's gonna be 50 feet tall. How long is it gonna take you to build that? Oh, I don't know. One, maybe two hours. It's a big job. So, what are you working on? Oh, it's a secret. Yeah, a secret. Uh-huh. We get the message. You don't want us around, I see. It's okay. We have better things to do. Au revoir! And I thought pie was for sharing. I guess you thought wrong. Aw, oh, man. Now I don't have any friends. I've got zilch. Nada. Nothing but a bucket of dirt. This is useless. Looks like it's back to the drawing board. So, you're becoming a farmer now? Huh? What? Huh? What? I asked if you were becoming a farmer. You know, that takes a lot of... patience. Hey! Look there! It's working! <laughs> it's working! It's working! It's working! Are you still mad at me? I just came by to pick up my hammer. Oh, well, here it is. Well... Keep up the good work. I gotta go. Yeah. But I 
forgot this song, so I rush along through my days and plans more hastily. And I soon lose track of the friends I lack, and I lose what means the most to me. So if I just slow down, if I look around, I would see there's more important things than what I create. And I'd learn to wait and enjoy the joys that life will bring. I am willing to wait, my work will be great. With patience, I'll do things right. I am willing to wait, my work will be great. With patience, I'll do things right. La 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 la, la la la. I am willing to wait, my work will be great. With patience, I'll do things right. Madame et Monsieur, the time has come. The unveiling of the inventions to bring back the boo boo. <laughs> It snaps shut, trapping him forever for our enjoyment. But how do you get the boo boo inside? That, my purple mayor, is where I come in. You see, I thought to myself, what better way to attract a boo boo than with a boo bat? Just wait till I start her up. A quick, a, a give her a nudge. Read this here. Maurice will be so proud that I stuck with it. Maybe we can still do the baguette relay. I'll show this to him first before I take it to the mad science. I, I mean, the scientist. This is never gonna work. That's two hours and a box of rubber bands wasted. <laughs> I have no alternative now, but to cancel the Boo Boo Festival. Hey, where's Jacques? Maybe his invention will work. Maurice! Maurice, I did it! But you did what? You know how you said I didn't have patience? You couldn't finish things right? Right. Well, I did it! <laughs> Everyone, I think I have a plan, but I'm gonna need your help, a little bit of patience, and a whole lot of C. Great. 
Congratulations, my boy. It's Leon Moran. What? You're Leon Moran? Yes, I was. I used to be that impatient old inventor. Until I learned what is truly important. Well, but you said Leon Moran almost ruined you. Yes, Jock. Being Leon Moran almost ruined you. Oh, clever. And now I'm so happy to see you've truly learned one of the most important lessons toward becoming a great inventor. Patience. Thank you, Monsieur Meringue. Thank you. Mind if I take you for a spin? It would be my honor. <laughs> Any further ace, buddy? I am willing to wait. My work will be great. With patience, I'll do things right. Are you willing to wait? Your work will be great. With patience, we will do Great. I'm glad you liked it, Junior. And I hope you liked it, too. We're over here by QWERTY to talk about what we learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. Did you bring a cookie for me? In a sec. Be patient. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us today. <laughs> and so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Hebrews 6.15 Wow! Bonus verse! Nice one, QWERTY. Did you upgrade your RAM? Huh, buddy? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. Proverbs 19.2 in our first story, we learned that Abraham and Sarah had to wait a long time to get what God promised them. And even though the waiting wasn't easy, they knew that God would keep his promises. That's right, Junior. And in the second story, Jacques learned that being impatient leads to mistakes. But when you're patient and take the time to do things right, great things can happen. So, Samuel, I guess the best thing you can do is to wait patiently for your bike and trust that God gives us exactly what we need, when we need it. Right again, Junior. Um, uh, about those cookies. Oh, yeah. Okay, he's ready. Ready for what? These were yummy cookies. They didn't belong to anybody, did they? <sighs> uh, so that's all the time we have for today, kids. <sighs> well, remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Goodbye! Goodbye! I can make you some more. Can you wait? Fragile leaves, celery, gotta be.